Hey everyone, you asked for it, now you're going to get it. Today, I'm going to talk about Berlitz for call center. What to expect, how to prepare for it, and how you could possibly pass it. Let's begin. So, what is Berlitz? Berlitz is a language test. It is the language test that some call center companies use to gauge their applicant's ability to speak a language. Think of Berlitz as a Versant test, if you are familiar with it. They are both language tests, but whereas Versant is using a software to gauge your level of fluency, Berlitz is going to employ a person, a human being, live. I cannot confirm this, but I am pretty sure that Berlitz is more expensive than Versant. If I were the owner of a call center company and I am in need of fluent call center agents, then I would definitely be using Berlitz instead of Versant. And that means that Berlitz is harder than Versant. The good thing is not all call center companies use Berlitz as their language test and not all accounts use Berlitz. Berlitz is going to be administered if the account that your recruiter has assigned you is a technical account, which means you are going to be the, a TSR or technical support representative. In this type of account, you are going to be giving directions to your customers and troubleshooting instructions. So it is imperative that you are descriptive when it comes to giving instructions. You need to be clear, concise, and easy to understand. I cannot say for sure that this is true to all call center companies, that this is only used for technical accounts, but this is usually the case. By the way, Berlitz is going to measure four things. It's going to measure the grammar accuracy, language range, pronunciation, and fluency. So to pass the Berlitz test, you need to have an overall score of B2. A2 is the lowest, B2 is the passing score, and C2 is the highest. So in my experience taking the Berlitz test, I was given a piece of paper by the recruiter. And on that piece of paper was the number that I was going to call. And then the recruiter led me into an empty room. I was alone. It was 9 p.m. and there was this large clock on the wall. And he instructed me that when 10 p.m. strikes, I should call the number on the paper. At least that's what I remember. And once you call that number, somebody on the other end of the line is going to answer your call. That somebody is the Berlitz administrator, your administrator. So first, your Berlitz administrator is going to explain the purpose of the test, what you should expect during the test, and other instructions. The instruction really is to just answer her questions in English and it should be conversational, meaning it's like talking to a person in a daily conversation. Think of it like you're talking to a stranger that you meet in the park. You have to be friendly. You have to be kind of lighthearted. You have to be open, warm, and approachable. But at the same time, you have to be professional and watch out what you say and the information you divulge to her. And now, once the administrator is finished instructing you and explaining what to expect about the test, then the test begins. And like most interviews... In the history of humankind, you are going to be asked to, to say something. And that something is going to be, tell me something about yourself. This is going to build the foundation of what you're going to be talking about during the test throughout the whole 15 minutes of the conversation. Because by the way, the test duration is 15 minutes. The good thing about Berlitz compared to a typical job interview is you absolutely don't need to impress your administrator about your professional background and employment background because you are going to talk about personal things. You don't necessarily have to talk about the position that you're applying for. You're going to be talking about anything really depending on what you answer when you're introducing yourself. Therefore, it is very important that you talk about the things that you know a lot about. You don't have to lie. You don't have to pretend. Just say anything that comes across your mind. And here are the things that I recommend you to say when you're introducing yourself. First, you can talk about the things that you're proud of about yourself. Or you can talk about your hobbies. Hobbies are usually the, the safest and the best thing to talk about. Um... Just make sure that it is a hobby that you really know a lot about. Because if you know a lot about that hobby, then you don't have to think too much. You just have to focus on expressing yourself clearly and concisely. You don't have to pretend, basically, is what I'm, is what I'm saying. 
Um, whereas in an actual job interview, you have to watch out for the words that come out of your mouth. In Berlitz, it's just like talking to a friendly stranger. So, in my experience with Berlitz, the administrator was a female. When I And when I introduced myself, I talked about my previous job and my hobbies, which is reading books and watching self-improvement materials. And then... Her next questions to me were mostly based on my initial answer to her question of tell me something about yourself. So you see, it's very important that you don't lie about your answer. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to create a persona that you are actually not. Just talk about yourself, really. It's more, you just be more casual, friendly, and at the same time, professional. Aside from my job, my previous job and my hobbies, we also talked about global warming. <laughs> and he asked, she asked me about, she asked me about what do I think about recycling, and should we or should we not do it? And then another question before the the call the call ended was, what were the what are the names of my cats in the province? <laughs> and I told her that. No, we don't really name the cats in the province, especially if there's a lot of them, you know. So she laughed at that. Um, there's a lot of cats. There were some casual questions that just made me comfortable to talk to her and express myself better. What I liked about that administrator was she was so friendly. Um, the moment that I introduced myself and talked about my interests and hobbies, she immediately jumped on that and she immediately asked something about my hobby. So it made me comfortable. It warmed me up to her and just helped with my anxiety overall. So I was able to express myself better and talk to her more clearly. Don't worry, guys, because in my next video, I'm going to make a mock burlitz where I create like a simulation of a burlitz that I have three years ago. Um, by the way, I actually had two burlitz. I don't know if the first one was a an actual Berlitz because the facilitator, I was so sure, was a Filipino. I could hear it from his accent and I suspected that he was just in another room. I think that he was an employee from the call center company that I applied for in. I'm not sure if that I'm not sure if he really was an actual Berlitz administrator, but the test was really just like the second actual Berlitz test that I experienced. So I'm probably gonna be making another video of both of those simulations because I took down all the questions that they both asked during those tests. So watch out for my next video and subscribe. And now I'm going to talk about the tips and tricks on how you could possibly pass this test that is evidently harder than Versant. So the, my first tip is try to talk like you are in a conversation, in a normal native English speaker conversation. For Filipinos and for any non-native English speaker, this is going to be a challenge if you have not been exposed to casual English conversation. So which means that you need to work on your spontaneity. And by the way, I made a video about this on how you can be more spontaneous when talking to native English speakers or when talking conversationally. And the only thing that you really should do now is listening. If you can understand 99.9% .9 of what I'm saying in this video, then you don't really need to work so hard on your vocabulary, on expanding your vocabulary. You just need to work on your spontaneity. And that's exactly what my video was all about. So I'm just going to link it up here at the top so you can watch it after this video. And tip number two that you should remember is you need to be casual and friendly but at the same time, you need to be professional. Yes, you can be both at the same time. Remember that in my Berlitz test, the administrator was asking me about the name of my cats. I mean, those were like as casual as you could get. They are so casual, but they are friendly. But at the same time, the topic was not sensitive. And by sensitive topics, you need to avoid your opinions about politicians, <laughs> about religions, about sex and you need to avoid using vulgar words that you would not use in a job interview. You also need to avoid bad mouthing your previous workplace. Keep it lighthearted. And this is something that you need to take note of, especially if your administrator is so friendly and warm. Just because she's friendly and warm to you doesn't mean that you should disclose every negative thing that you have in your mind. Keep your topic, you know, safe. Avoid these topics and you should be fine. 
You can talk about your personal life, but don't talk about the negative things. Keep it casual, friendly, lighthearted, but at the same time, professional. And my third tip, which is very important if you have trouble expressing yourself, is to use the PrEP framework. And PrEP means point, reason, explanation, and point. This is especially useful when you're asked about your opinion. For example, in my case, it was, what do you think about recycling? Should we or should we not do it? And I know that to some of you, this, is could, this could be really a nerve-wracking question, a nerve-wracking moment. The challenge usually for most non-native speaker is how to answer it in a clear and concise way. Here's an example of prep used in an answer. Point, I love consuming self-help materials. Reason, because it, it exposes me to new ideas and help me improve myself financially. Explanation, for example, I never would have known anything about blogging and that it was possible for me to earn a passive income online had I not been reading self-help materials from books and the internet. And point, and that's exactly why I will never stop reading self-help books. So as you can see, if you follow this framework, you will be able to to express your answer clearly to the interviewer because you have a pattern. So when you get to improve your English and become more and more fluent with the language, the prep framework just comes naturally. But if you are a non-native English speaker and you're anxious when you're talking to native English speakers, you might want to take note of this framework so you will be able to have a map when you're confused about your answer. And my tip number four is smile. I am saying this not for the sake of your administrator, but for your sake, for you to be able to alleviate your anxiety during the interview. Because when you smile, you actually activate some of that mechanism in your body that makes you feel relaxed. Um, I mean, it's science. You can search it. I'm not going to explain it here. But in short, when you smile, you become more confident. And aside from that, your voice actually also changes. Your voice becomes more confident friendlier, and overall pleasant to hear. Uh, let me demonstrate. Okay, I'm going to say uh, an opening spiel of the call flow, but with, when smiling and not smiling. Okay, so I'm not smiling right now. I'm just going to I'm gonna say it. Um, Hi, thank you for calling question. This is Candice. How may I help you? And compared to when I'm smiling, okay, I'm going to smile. <laughs> let me smile. Hi, thank you for calling Power Up. This is Candice. How may I help you? There really is a difference, guys. I mean, I did not do that on purpose. When I smile, my voice also smiles. There's some, some warmth added to my voice, extra warmth added to my voice, extra friendliness added to it when I smile. It just comes naturally. It's something that you're not even aware of until somebody tells you about it. And yeah, again, it's science. You can search about it. I'm not going to explain it here. But definitely smile to help you with your anxiety and to also sound pleasant over the phone. It wouldn't hurt your score if you sound more confident with your answers. Another thing is you also want to build rapport with your Berlitz administrator. Although this is not going to be hard, I am pretty sure that these administrators were trained to help you feel more comfortable when talking to them. Because when you are comfortable talking to them, when you're at ease, then they are going to be able to gauge your actual level of commu communication, which is what they really need. So in my experience, both the ones with the Filipino administrator and the ones that that's the actual Berlitz administrator, um, they were so friendly, especially the, the American one. There was even one time that I talked too much and she interrupted me, but the way she interrupted me was really something, which was really in a way that did not offend me at all, that I understood. And overall, she was just so warm. She was just so friendly that right after her second question, I started to warm up to her and I didn't feel as anxious as when I started the test. Another thing is try to be friendly. And as Filipinos, it's not going to be a problem because we're Filipinos after all. We have practically mastered the art of being friendly. And my tip number five is practice your spontaneity when speaking the English language. Of all the tips that I'm sharing with you here, this is the most important. This is going to be the tip that will have the most impact when it comes to whether or not you're going to pass this test. 
And the last thing is you need to be prepared for out of the box questions. These are the type of questions where you need to make a stand or express your opinion and then support that opinion effectively. In my case, as I said, it was about um, what do you think about recycling? Should we or should we not do it? It is simple enough, but when you are placed in this type of situation, your answer is kind of like all over the place. And again, in order to deal with this problem, you need to use the prep framework. For now, if you really want to practice, why don't you ask someone close to you to ask questions like this and then practice by using the prep framework? Uh, mind you, this is not going to be the majority of the test. The majority of the test is going to be the things that you know, the things that you're proud of about yourself. And then the, the administrator will insert one or two questions like this. So it's not going to take the majority of the 15 minutes, but you still need to prepare. And by the way, one thing I forgot, I know I said that uh, that was the last step, but this one is very important and I just remember it now, is that you need to study the prepositions. This is important. The interviewer is going to ask you directions. In my case, she was asking me to illustrate to her in words how to get from my apartment going to my workplace, which was the call center in IT Park in Cebu at that time. And oh God, this was the part where it was so hard for me. This was, I, th I think I really butchered this part. I was able to give her the directions, but she asked uh, a lot of follow-up questions. So I'm not sure. I think that was the part of the task where I really butchered. I was saying, oh, when you get to IT Park, you have to turn right, and then you walk five minutes, and then you're going to see another intersection. <laughs> it was hard. It was hard. But I think the, with, those directions, uh, with those directions that I gave her, one should be able to locate my workplace. It's just that it was so hard for me. It was awkward. That is why you need to pay attention on how you use the, the prepositions. Prepositions like on, in, behind, across, onto, towards, along. All the prepositions that you can think of. Try to master them before taking your realist test. In short, you need to practice your spontaneity with the English language. And then you need to practice the prepositions, the use of your prepositions. Again, don't worry. I'm going to make a mock burlitz in my next video. And I will try to simulate as much as I could the test that I took uh, three years ago. But, and by the way, guys, when you are asked for your opinion, there are no right or wrong answers as long as you can support your answer effectively. Of course, you still want to be professional with your answer. Again, avoid the sensitive topics that I discussed earlier. Uh, but at the end of the day, there will be no right or wrong answers. It is going to be your opinion. So just make sure that you can support your answer. For example, if you are asked, which is more important, knowledge or money? And most of us are probably going to answer knowledge. But then if you are going to answer money, as long as you can support that answer well, as long as you can present explanations supporting that answer effectively, then you should be fine. The administrator is not going to take it against you if you value money than knowledge. No biggie. Okay, here's what happens after the Berlitz test, at least in my experience. So after my Berlitz test, the recruiter asked me to wait in the hallway. I think I waited around 30 minutes to an hour. And then she approached me and congratulated me, told me that I passed, and then I went home. So in my case, uh, the passing score was B2 in that particular call center company. But mind you, I am not sure if this applies to all call center companies in the Philippines. Maybe it's possible that other accounts are willing to accept uh, scores that are below B2. So I'm not sure. Uh, tell me in the comments below if that's the case. Because I checked the Berlitz uh, website and they have apparently 10 levels of proficiency. So that's like from functional, intermediate, upper intermediate, advanced, professional. So the B2 belongs to advanced. So I'm not sure. So if you know the rating of the Berlitz test that you took, you might want to tell me in the comments below because most call centers require scores that are within B2. All right, guys, that is all for today. In my next video, I'm going to be making a mock Berlitz 
or as Berlitz simulation. So watch out for that and subscribe, comment, ask questions, and bye.